Okay, the appointed hour, the appointed hour, five o'clock p.m. has been reached. And I welcome everybody to the meeting of the Amherst Design Review Board. My name is Catherine Porter. As chair of the Amherst Design Review Board, I will call the meeting to order and uh, take attendance. As I ca call your name, please indicate that you are here. Uh, Tom Long. Present. Okay, Catherine Davis. Uh, Erica Zikos. Here. Okay, and Catherine Porter. Okay. <clears throat> Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 22nd, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, GIC30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in any one place, the public hearing of the design, Amherst Design Review Board is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members or the public will be permitted. Uh, also in attendance is Maureen Pollock, planner and staff liaison to the Design Review Board. The Design Review Board and its accompanying zoning regulations were created by the town meeting in October of 1983. The charge and purpose of the Design Review Board under Section 3.2 of the Zoning Bylaw is to preserve and enhance the town's cultural, economic, and historical resources by providing for a detailed review of all changes in land use, the appearance of structures, and the appearance of sites which may affect these resources. The Design Review Board examines this responsibility exercises this responsibility by providing design review and recommendations to private applicants and permit granting boards within specific overlay zoning districts in the town common, the design review overlay district, and the town common design review overlay district. Design review was also provided for town departments and permit granting boards with respect to town projects anywhere in Amherst, which will result in substantial alteration to the form or appearance of a structure or site. All design review board meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. Each meeting recording will be uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel for public viewing. The procedure is as follows. The pe petitioner presents the application to the board during the meeting, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will deliberate. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon recommendations for each respective application. Once the board has voted on its recommendations, the staff liaison will type up the recommendations for distribution to the applicant, board, applicable land use board, and building commissioner. And today we have several um, petitions and um, I think we see them there on the board. Um, so, uh, Maureen, do we have somebody here for DRB FY 2022-20? Lisa G. Kent. Yes, so uh, Lisa, I'll make you a panelist one second. Okay. And I just sent an email to um, Catherine Davis okay. to see if she's able to join us. She might be just running late or, or what have you. So I'm gonna stop the, my screen. And if Lisa, if you could, I guess, turn your screen on and sh or um, share your screen and introduce yourself um, and um, show and explain what your proposal includes. Um, I just Here. asked you to unmute yourself. Hmm. Okay, Lisa? I'm, yes, yeah, sorry, a little bit of technical difficulty on my end. Okay, 
Um, now I'm going to do start the video part. Also having trouble with that. That's not good. Um, let um, me um, let me see what else I can do. Um, if it's possible at all to move to the other applicants, so as not to waste time. Uh, uh, um, I can share my screen if um, and so so I'm I'm pulling up your application right now. So um, if you are able to um, explain it, so let me absolutely. Um, Thank you. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I'm trying to get my settings to work. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. OK. All right. So um, yeah, so I am I operate as a solo lawyer. I've operated in um, I, I live in Amherst about uh, three blocks away from the property. So I was thrilled to find this office so close to my uh, my my home. I live on Chestnut Street. Um, I've operated as a lawyer uh, in the state of Massachusetts since 2003 and primarily had an, uh, an office in Greenfield um, with my partner, Diane Esser, who passed away in 2018. I've kept the name Esser Kent uh, Family Law and Mediation. Uh, the property, most of you know, it is uh, houses Mexicalito uh, restaurant and used to have the yoga center Amherst next door. Uh, my external door, if you can maybe. Well, Oops. Perfect. Okay. You were getting to the door. Yeah, I, I, I took additional oh. photos. So beautiful. We can here we go. Here's here, okay. this is where the door that you're proposing to for the, your signage in your entranceway. Yes. Correct, correct. And um, and there you have it. The, the top part of the sign, uh, when I was thinking about putting up a sign, basically there is a kind of carved out little space in front, right below that little clerestory window. Mm -hmm. uh, it looked like it's for a sign. So I worked with Sean Cleary at uh, Amherst Design Copyworks to take my logo and logo type and make that sign. Then on the vinyl, which I don't know if you want it. Could you possibly do it? Um, You're doing this far better than I could. I just want uh, to tell you. <laughs> uh, I feel uh, maybe uh, I thought you had a closer one. Uh, that's okay. I can zoom yeah. in. Oh, if you can zoom into the vinyl, then you can see. Yeah, it basically states my, my contact information and what I what I do. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been really delightful because I've gotten two clients who just happen to be moseying up to get a bite to eat. and. Uh, in fact, one is going to come in and sign her prenup. So that's uh, that's about it. The you know that that's the signage that I propose to to have, and I hope it 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 meets okay. muster. Okay. Is it there already, or is it? Are you proposing it? Well, let me tell you. It, this is kind of a, an awkward situation. I was not as a lawyer, uh, should have known about the design review board requirements. So yes, the answer is yes, it is there already. Is it removable? Absolutely. Uh, do I want to remove it? Not so much. Um, I think it's working, it's working well. So this is a question of me kind of retroactively asking for uh, approval. So I is, did, I'm sorry. And I would say is the door and the uh, the same color as everything else on that side. Uh, it looks like a brown. Is it a brown or a black? And is every is that in keeping with the uh, all of the uh, oh. window frames and doors on that side? Correct. The the okay. doors. I, I have not changed any paint okay. on the doors. Okay. They're all brown. Um, the only. And, and the white that is outlining the, the, the window, that's there. That's an existing mm -hmm. okay. frame. So. I was just going to say that uh, Catherine Chiavaroli of uh, my landlord had signed off on the, I had sent her a proof of this and, and she liked it. And I thought that was all that was necessary, but not, not true. So here I am. Okay. Okay. Um. Would uh, Erica or Tom like to make a comment? 
Yeah, Tom did it right, so I'll let him go first. But I do always have a question. <laughs> Um, first, I just want to say, Lisa, you're not the first person to install something and then come get it. So don't feel bad about that. Um, We're used to it. I think it happens every other meeting, so yeah. don't worry about it. Um, and I, I'm fine with that. I mean, super uh, simple and clean and understated, and um, I have no issues with it at all. And no recommendations. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Erica? Thanks. Um, hi, Lisa. Thanks for your walking us through it. Um, I agree with Tom. I just have one point of clarification, and that is in the text of your application, you wrote that the three, there in quotes, blurbs below your email address on the door vinyl will be removed to provide a less cluttered appearance. And while I don't have anything to critique about what you've shown us here, I do think that it would provide a less cluttered appearance and think it's a good idea. If you yes. don't well, when I had the proof, uh, when I was going back and forth with the company to do the proof, I they sent me this and I said, oh, I don't really need those three little sentences um, because also they, they're kind of uh, restrictive. I might not be representing people in divorces in, in two years. Um, so I was going to order a new vinyl. Um, and they were going to, to do that for me. So basically what would happen would be is, yeah, we would just have it without those three sentences. Mm -hmm. I, I go back and forth on it, frankly, because sometimes I, but you know, whatever you say, uh, I, will, I, I will do because I, I could go both ways at this point. Right, that's interesting. So Erica, what would you, would you uh, feel that that might reduce the clutter and leave the email there? Um, I mean, I think it personally I feel that it's, it's nicely balanced and it'll be fine either way. Yeah. Okay. 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 Any other comments from Tom or Erica? I think it's fine. I, think I mean, one thought is I actually haven't been to your website, but, um, you know, you, you might want to consider replacing those three blurbs with a link to your website, or at least, you know, I know it's in your email above, but not everybody's smart enough to figure that out. Um, they will in like five years or so, but um, as of now, you know, it might be worthwhile to, to put your email there where you state this. And so if you do change that I'm not doing divorce or I'm doing something uh -huh. else, your website will keep people up to date. So at least people can find out more about you. No, you're absolutely right. That, that was actually one of my notes. And I, I, think, I think I will go ahead and do that and maybe just take out the three sentences and put in the uh, URL to the website. Okay. All right. Okay, so uh, do I hear a motion that we approve uh, Lisa's uh, new signature door? Do I hear? Uh, so move. So move, and uh, Erica? Second. Second. Okay, <clears throat> all in favor? raise your hands or say aye. Right. Okay, well, that'll be the easiest, Lisa, you'll ever, case you'll ever have to <laughs> file <laughs> an Amherst. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. We're, we're a pushover. Yeah. yeah, no, I really appreciate yeah. it. Thank sure. you. It looks Thank very you. nice. Yeah, we wish you well. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. You. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> So the next item on the agenda is for the bank. Hold on one second, I need to pull up the agenda. Where's where's the agenda? Hold on. Um, the next item is um, Image One Industries LLC to review the proposed signage for M N T Bank, um, located at twenty five East Pleasant Street. And I think I made one of. Um, the applicants, uh, panelists, Joe, um, I'll, if you could unmute yourself. Um, and uh, if there are any other um, representatives of the project, if you could raise your hand and I can make you a panelist. I know a few of them had emailed me saying they would be in attendance tonight. Yes, this is uh, Joe Knotts uh, and I have uh, Darlene Fenstermacher on her phone here. Oh, okay. I'll pull her up as a panelist. And if you can share your screen and uh, you both can introduce yourselves and you know show and explain what you're proposing. 
Give me one second, please. Let me see if I'm able to pull this up. I'm sorry, but I don't see an option where I could share my screen. It just says mute and then start video participants. Oh, here we go. All right, give me one second. Okay, can you see my screen? Not yet. Yeah. Here we yeah. go. It's coming up. There you go. There you go. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So my name is Joe Knotts, and I'm a project manager with Image One Industries. Uh, we are the signage vendor representing our client, M&T Bank. Uh, to kind of give you a little back history here, M&T Bank uh, recently acquired People's United Bank, and we're currently in a rebranding process of switching out the People's United Bank signage with M&T Bank signage. So that's what I will be presenting in our package here. This page here is just an overview of the signage on the property. On this page, it shows the existing People's United Bank on the storefront facing the street mm -hmm. and our proposed signage. Uh, the existing signage currently is facelit illuminated channel letters, and we are proposing to replace them with the M T bank facelet channel letters and our square footage of the signage is smaller than the people's united bank existing signage mm -hmm. on the next page here we're showing a temporary cover uh, because we're currently in the process of uh, removing the signage so we propose to remove the people's united bank signage and install the M T bank signage uh, the unveiling of uh, m and officially uh, presenting themselves to the community is actually going to take place on Labor Day weekend. Uh -huh. So uh, within the next, uh, once everything is approved by you guys and we remove uh, the People's United Bank signage, we're going to install the m and bank signage and then install this temporary banner. Um, and then during Labor Day weekend, remove this banner. It is the same situation for the signage on the right elevation of the building. We will remove the existing facelit People's United Bank channel letters, install M&T Bank channel letters, install a temporary banner until unveiling weekend. And again, this proposed signage is less square footage than the People's United Bank signage. And the same situation with the third elevation on the left side of the building. Remove people's United Bank and install M&T Bank. And then install a temporary banner until unveiling weekend. The rest of the signs in this package are just regulatory signs. We're essentially replacing like for like here as well, removing the People's United Bank mounted regulatory signs in the parking lot, replacing it with the M&T bank standard, mm -hmm. updated standard. Same for these signs as well. Same for this sign as well. And essentially, that is it. <laughs> Do you have any uh, signage for the doors or the windows?
That is a great question. Let me check back in my notes here. I don't see they are proposing, M&T is proposing any window signage. However, we most likely will propose a door vinyl. Uh, I will have to check back in my notes here because usually when you're entering the bank, it just lists M&T Bank. Okay. It lists their branches hours and then it would say something in regards to welcome and thank you, welcoming uh, clients into the branch. Right. But nothing on the windows. Okay. Like graphics or anything, it would just be on the main entrance door. Okay, so uh, did you have any more to uh, uh, discuss or shall we chime in? Not sure where we are. Uh, uh, yep, essentially that is it. Okay. Um, All right. Okay, let's hear from the design review board. Um, Erica, any comments? Yeah, I mean, thank you. Comprehensive overview. Oh, I'd love to see those pictures again. Um, I have I have two things that pop up for me um, right away. One of them is a little more ambiguous design question, and I'll get to that second. The first one is when you replace the People's United Bank signage, which is considerably larger, um, will there be punctures in the metal panel that need to be repaired? Is there cleaning to be done when you take that down? And, and can we be assured that the smaller signage is going to, you know, not reveal past electrical conduit or? Good question. Yes, absolutely. That is in our scope that once the signage is removed to patch and repair the wall to like new condition. Okay. Um, and then the, the second more ambiguous question is actually regarding uh, this elevation, and that is that I, you've done a nice job of um, centering the m and bank signage on the total, like on the large facade here, um, but I'm wondering if it should actually be centered over the glazing um, instead, and I, I don't know if anybody else has an opinion on that, but it just it feels it almost feels lopsided because the the black of the glass is so dominant here oh so what would you thinking move it uh you're thinking move it one way or the other mm, I, yeah i'm just wondering if moving it yeah. to the left so that it's centered over so the it, glass makes I sense see, yeah. as, as something to study yeah. uh-huh yeah okay uh tom um, yeah, I would agree with that. I'm, I'm looking at the um, Google Street View images because I was trying to find out where the front door actually is. Um, it's to the left of that, by the way. Um, and so I, I think I'm trying to figure out that when you actually zoom out, whether or not it does make sense when you see because that that upper clear story or white or light tile continues past that brick element also so it's even longer so it even feels asymmetrical anyway um my sense is that it's worth looking at um i i don't know which one's going to be right or wrong um because yeah. i haven't seen it but i do think that it might make sense to center it over the glass um especially when you see the full facade and the glass actually carries all the way to the outside edge on the left um mm. so um Anyway, it's, it's definitely worth exploring. And I think um, in the end, you'll find that um, it, it'll probably feel right to center or to, to move it left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the intent here was just to center it on the whole facade versus right. just centering it over the windows. Yeah. Right, but um, what's actually happening here, I'm gonna annotate, <laughs> is that this actually continues out here um, uh, so, okay so like centering this over this 
will actually center it in the whole facade, um, which you can't actually see um, in these images. Anyway, it's just a thought. Again, like I, I don't know if it's going to feel right or not, but when I look at the street view and see the full facade, it feels like it's even right now, People's United feels a little bit over to the right. Anyway, it's just something to think about. Uh, but I agree with that. And I, I think that, um, I mean, it'd be nice to see the, the graphics for the door, um, but the door is actually kind of hidden. And so I can't imagine you putting anything on the door. I would find a fence. <laughs> um, it's kind of around a corner. So, um, you know, I mean, it'd be nice to see it and have it submitted. But I mean, I would approve it based on um, what I would suspect you'd put on that front door anyway. There's nothing on it right now, actually. Or maybe there is, it's just really tiny. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I th I would agree. I, I like the idea of something significant under the uh, sign. I don't know how many blocks over you'd have to do that, but it's worth a discussion. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah, think it's- Yeah, that continues over to the left. Yeah, that's right. It wouldn't. Uh, I think it's a, uh, I actually like the logo better than the one that you're replacing. So certainly don't have any problem with that. Okay, any other thoughts uh, from Erica or Tom? And I'm so, sorry, I, I do have a photo if I'm able to share my screen again sure. of what the door vinyl looks like. able to see my screen. No. We see it now, Jim. Okay. So this is what it will look like entering. It says welcome. It says M and T Bank at the top. Uh, there is a holiday plaque. Uh, say Thanksgiving, Christmas, it'll just put an insert in there. And then below the welcome has their lobby hours, so then an FBI decal and a non smoking decal. And then as you're exiting the branch, it's somewhat reversed. It says thank you as you're exiting. That's Could you email that to me? If I don't know if that was included in the packet, just so we have that on file. Yes, absolutely. And for reference, there's two doors then, right? Because there's that looks like it's a rear door, and then the front door. There's, there's I guess my assumption is that the, the the door facing the front of the building will look the same. Yes, you're correct. Okay. So it would be shown on both doors, mm -hmm. which I can easily resubmit this to you. It's great. I have no other comments, but okay. thank you. All right. Okay. Now, um, I'm sorry. Going back to the the placement of the M and T Bank letter. So, would you like us to slightly move that to the left so it's centered more, or? Is it okay as shown? And then I could get that updated as well and resubmit it. Well, I think the suggestion was that maybe move it a little to the left so it would be over the door. Um, that's really up to you. Uh, but I, I, my sense is that the suggestion is that you consider this um, based on what we see as uh, perhaps a better placement of the logo. Was that, does that jive Erica and Tom with what we're hearing? What I was hoping to say was test out whether centering the M&T Bank logo, not over the door, but over the expanse oh, okay. of glazing that we see in this image. Okay, all right. Tom, okay. Tom's gonna edit, annotate. Um, yeah, over that stretch. Okay. So it would, it would so involve moving between. it to the left, but not much. Um, 
What do you think? Might help to balance the facade. Yeah, like two blocks or something. That. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No all problem right. at all. Okay. Very good. Okay. So, uh, Maureen, do you have that? Uh, that yeah. Order? And so, if you could um, email us the um, revised sign plan for this for this particular one, that would be helpful as well. Okay. Okay. All right. Do I hear a motion that we ap approve the uh, petition with the uh, suggestion that consideration be be made to move the uh, sign over uh, one or two of those tiles, I guess. So moved. Right, yeah, okay. Second. Okay, all in favor, aye. Aye. Oh, all right, oh, all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good luck, <laughs> yeah. Perfect, thank you everyone. Sure. Thanks, Joe. Okay, right, next have we have uh, Nate Malloy. Um, from the planning department who will okay. be, whoops, I might have made the wrong person the panelist. I don't know. Oh, no, I did make him. Uh, he, he will be showing you the updated sign design and layout in uh, kiosk for the dog park. Okay. Hi, hi, everyone. Hello, Nate. Thanks for having me. I'm Nate Malloy. I'm a planner with the town for everyone else who might be watching. The, um, I'll share my screen in a minute. The, uh, yeah, so the dog park is mostly constructed now. There'll be a soft opening later this month. And um, I'll be showing you uh, signs and, and a kiosk that um, we'd like to put in the um, entry plaza area. Okay. Um, and, you know, the kiosk is would match the one that's at Groff Park. And the signs are trying to resemble conservation signs. Um, the project did go to the planning board um a new site plan review to the planning board the other week and they recommended um that the signs have more consistency with the wayfinding signs um, in terms of font uh, color and some style or thematic elements uh, and then there are some questions about the size of the sign uh, or signs just because some of them were proposed to be pretty big <clears throat> um so i guess i'll just share my screen what was originally in the packet and um, I'll annotate a little bit since Tom, you know, is jumping in on that. I think it's actually a great use of Zoom. Um, so, you know, this, uh, this is Old Belcher Town Road and there's 17 parking spaces on the front of the dog park. And then there's a five foot chain link fence that goes around the park. And so um, there's a little entry plaza outside the fence and then there's, you know, a chain link fence here. And the idea is to have a, a kiosk in this location. And then uh, there's a little um, vestibule where you can enter and then close the gate behind you and then go either into the small dog area or the big dog area. And you can, so, you know, there's a main entry gate and then there's one to each side. And then the idea is to have a sign here, a sign on this side, uh, and then maybe a, um, a sign on the fence. So all these three signs would be on the fence itself. Um, the, there's a dog park task force, so volunteer citizens who have been working with the town staff to develop the signs and also on the park and fundraise and then also be involved with the maintenance of it. And so, um, you know, there's so three signs here, a kiosk, and then we're proposing possibly an offsite sign, a uh, freestanding sign um, that would look similar to the welcome sign that would be here on the site. Um, originally, the idea was to have it somewhere here. Uh, as you're driving, the planning board thought that you know, once you come down Old Belstertown Road, you, you kind of already know you're headed to the dog park unless you're just stumbling upon it for the first time. So the recommendation was maybe to have a sign on Route 9, which would be over off, off the diagram, off the plan here. So um, that's something to consider. We haven't considered it yet as staff, just because it's a little more involved um, to do that. So let's see, this is just a grading plan. Um, you know, I will, I will say that the, you know, benches are in, um, the shade structures are in. So the benches um, are the same as at Groff and at Kendrick Park. So they're new uh, metal style. The shade structures, um, you know, are also installed. I think they have like, you know, the manufacturer had, um, I forget what colors they are, like tan and red, tan post, maybe a, a red shade sail. 
um, a dark dog bark task force recommended those colors and um, the you know the shale the the shade sails and kind of like the the fabric and style mimic what we have at Groff and Mill River and other parks. So um, I think it's that's captured in my picture. Um, so here's what is so um, let me just see if I can seems a little large. The uh, so on the main entry gate, you know, so you walk in, there's one that one main entry gate. There's proposed to have dog park rules on one side, and then there's dog park etiquette signs on the other. And so here's here's the the rule sign, and so it, it's proposed to be four feet by four feet. Oh. Um, so you know, I think we might want some recommendations on the size of it. Uh, you know, the the language um, is. Um, I don't want to say it's set in stone, but you know, this is something they like to have this as the rules. And so unless there's some, some reason to change the language grammatically, um, there's an email, the Amher Amherst dog park at gmail.com. And I've asked our IT staff if we could have a, uh, an Amherst MA.gov, like a town email that would be rerouted. And they said that due to uh, spam and some other reasons that we actually don't um, we don't do that with emails anymore. So we still can do like a web redirect with a web link, but not with an email. Um, you know, there was some question about why is it a Gmail account and not a town account? And really, it's going to the dog park task force. I mean, we could have that email somehow get forwarded to the town, but um, you know, so that that was one thing about that. Um, so here's one sign. I'll just go scroll down. To the etiquette sign, which is slightly different, um, mm -hmm. and you know, again, uh, four feet by four feet. You know the, um, yeah, mm -hmm. and th and then the welcome sign. Oh, it's funny; these were scanned at scale, right? So um, it's funny. The uh, I didn't realize the PDF was <laughs> was. Uh, <laughs> was this way. So anyways, then there's a welcome sign, which they're considering uh, temporary, but it is something that we'd want to have on the fence and maybe it would mimic or, you know, be mimicked in the freestanding sign. Um, so, you know, welcome to the dog park maintained by friends of Amherst dog park. Um, and the kiosk, these are the, the specs for the kiosk. And really here's some images of the kiosk from Groff park. So it's, it's the same thing. It's a, um, you know, there's really eight display areas. You know, that are roughly two feet by four feet. And, um, you know, the kiosk itself, I'm not sure what it, you know, it, I haven't looked at the actual dimensions, the roof overhang, but um, uh, yeah, I was gonna say maybe almost like six feet by six feet. And so on this kiosk, the dog park task force and the town would like to have, um, you know, donors, uh, maybe a locust map, um, some other information. Um, you know, this park was funded by, uh, by the Stanton Foundation and other grants, and then also private contributions. Uh, and then there's other display areas. Um, let's see what else. So here's just a detail of what this looks like. And so, you know, there's been some discussion about would there be a display case or what, you know, really it's just a, you know, vertical board with things that have been stapled on there. And so um, we haven't determined yet, I don't think. Um, you know, if there'd be a plexiglass cover um, or what, you know, what kind of, if there is any, any other finishing uh, to that. Um, I did take some pictures today. So I think I'll start a new share and we can just walk through um, what's there. So here's the dog park, uh, you know, from the road. And so right now there's handicapped spaces with two, you know, handicapped signs there's this community preservation act banner. And so this is actually, um, you know, two feet by 10 feet, just to give you a sense. And this one is, you know, like 18 by 32 or something. So here's the temporary sign. Um, you know, here, here it is as you're approaching, um, you know, in a parking space, just again, just, you know, the shade sails are in the background. So it's a, you know, they somewhat um, kind of disappear there's a dog way station with a sign that has just information. Let's see, I just wanted to um, 
I'll get a little closer. So here's what the, we have temporary signs that are going up on the fence. So the rules uh, and the etiquette would be on either side of, here's the entry gate. So at this scale, you know, they're roughly um, 17 inches, the red 17 by 17. And you know, the white's a little bigger, but um, you know, the top is like one inch lettering, maybe like inch and a quarter lettering. And this is taken from about six feet away. And so, um, you know, if it weren't, you know, so this is right, like say, we can say almost two feet by two feet. Um, here's an image of something that's four feet by four feet, you know, with the, the, all, the all the white. And so compared to this, you know, 12 by 18 sign, here's a, a four foot sign. So, um, yeah, I just, you know, um, so maybe we have a little bit of uh, help there. Um, yeah, so this actually is 18 by 23, right? So this red area, um, which, you know, when you're six feet, you know, the picture, it is hard to capture in an, in an image, but, you know, if you're, you know, this is taken from about six feet away, seven feet away, and you can read it. Um, you know, I think this is, like I said, maybe an inch and a quarter lettering here. Um, and then, you know, I, I guess that's probably it. You know, I, I was just, you know, I was just taking different images, putting up the welcome sign and then an etiquette sign that's smaller. Um, you know, what does it look like when you're actually standing there? Um, and so I'll just go one, back up one, if this is large enough. Yeah, so here, if you walk in the kiosk, the kiosk will be here. Um, as you, you know, arrive, then the idea is to have, you know, one sign on the fence, two signs on the fence straddling the entry gate, you know, rules and regulations and etiquette. And then this welcome sign would be moved over um, to where the fence comes out. So it'd be off the screen. So it might, it could be where the preservation X sign is or over on the, um, the right-hand side. Um, you know, and originally they wanted this welcome sign or whatever you want to call it, a dog park sign to be a little bit bigger, you know, like a banner. So, um, you know, proportionally, if it was two feet, maybe it'd be like six feet. I, you know, I don't know, you know, as opposed to two by 10. Um, and I think that's kind of the presentation. Um, I, you know, I will say that Kestrel Trust and the town um, have been doing some work on conservation land. And so, you know, like the, the chamfered corners, the rounded corners and everything, I was gonna go back to the, uh, I'll cancel this for a minute. Um, um, you know, the chamfered corners and some of the font is what's been used on conservation signs. I was trying to make a mock-up of our wayfinding signs, but we're limited to Microsoft um, software. And the font that was chosen for some of the signs is not supported uh, and their illustrator files as well. So um, I've been talking to staff about having, you know, having whether it's um, someone we've worked with before uh, come up with a, a sign template that we could use to almost plug and play when we have something like this. So we're not, you know, reinventing every time. Um, but I will, um, you know, welcome any comments. So I'll just, you know, pull, you know, something like this up just to. I think this is about the third iteration we've seen at that kiosk. It's definitely changed over the last, I don't know, two or three years, whenever the first one came up. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, the, the, the first idea was to have like a hex a kiosk with like a hexagon shape or roof maybe and yeah, and have it be very complicated. It was and, yes, that's right. And tile, a special uh, uh, gra uh, surface just right. for the kiosk, but that's okay. Yeah. I don't know <clears throat> when you're talking about, uh, I don't have any problem with, with the personally with the big signs. I'm just not sure in total how many signs are going to be there. Welcome to the dog park. Uh, uh, could look a little busy or distracting. Um, that's one thought. And my other thought, probably nobody's going to hear this, but that kiosk seems superfluous. Uh, 
you know, like, why do you need it? You don't even know what you're going to put on it and how you're going to stick things on it. Um, you could save your town some money and you've got the signs. That's what people want to know, what the rules are and uh, come in, have a dog, bring your dog in and go home. The kiosk uh, to me is just, uh, I don't know, that's up to you, but uh, I'm not going to vote it down, but that's my, that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. We have others. <laughs> We have Erica and we have Tom. Tom has your hand up. Yeah, I mean, I see, I saw this um, from the planning board. So, and I was on site with Nate. So we were kind of looking at this together. Um, I mean, I truly believe that the 48 inch sign is really massive. Um, and, and I don't know if it, um, if it's completely necessary to have something that, that that's that large. Um, my sense is that um, it's something you're going to read from close up. It's not yeah. something you're going to read from six or eight feet away. That's right. um, you're going to walk up to it. It's right next to the entry. You're literally going to be inches away from it. We don't, it's not like a, a display sign. It's not an advertisement. It's information that people will read up close. Um, and if they need to smash their face up against it or put on their glasses, I think that's okay. Um, I think Nate, your your mock up of the big white forty eight inch panel is what also <laughs> gives me pause. It's just so massive, and they're going to be both of the you know one on each side. Um, what I what I was thinking is that um, when I looked at the fence, right, it has a horizontal break. That's a five foot fence, so that's two and a half feet. That seems like 30 inches, seems ample. Um, so if you could box that into two 30, 30 inch, um, you know, signs. I also think there's a lot of extra space on this sign that might not need to be there, but I definitely agree that we need a standard and that this needs to match the, the signage that we find at the other parks. Um, even if it's not signage is you know if it's produced by um you know a, a small local town group i still think that um if it's in the public domain it needs to match yeah. that yeah. standard so however we need to make that happen um let me know i can pitch in if need be but i'd, I'd much rather see it be in the same typeface and with the same header graphic and all that stuff um, just to, you know, for consistency. Because the minute we, we show an example of something going off script, it's going to give everybody a precedent. Well, you know, at the dog park, they did this and then blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden we're like, why did we have a, a standard in the first place? Yeah, exactly. So um, I, I think we just make it mandatory and, um, and stick with it, whatever we have to do to, to get there. So those are my two comments. I don't mind the um, the kiosk. I mean, I'd be interested to find out how it's actually being used at the other locations and whether like it seems useful. Um, if it does, cool, then I think we should keep doing it. But if it just sits there and nobody uses it or there's no information on it, then that seems like a, a great place for rules and regulations as opposed to stuff to get tacked up on the fence. So anyway, those are my those are my thoughts. But I mean, I, you know, I, I would much rather see it again before I we approve anything. So I want to see it formatted and I want to see it scaled to the right okay. um, to a more appropriate size. Well, could, uh, could I jump in and ask you, Nate, is that the color? It's going to be, it looks like maroon and white. Is that what it is? Yeah, so I think okay. the, um, I was gonna to try to pull up our wayfinding sign. You know, it was um, kind of maroon and there's white and then um, kind of like a cream color. So we do have the, um, you know, color codes. So, um, you know, it, yeah. And so it would match that. So if it's, um, you know, whatever the, you know, whatever, you know, however we would, um, it may not be, I don't know how it's, what it looks like on your screen, but yeah, it would it'd be the same color red as like what's at the Kendrick Park sign or okay. the same, you know. Yeah. You now you're it. not calling the wayfinding signs of the signs we approved 
couple of years ago that uh, one was going to be down at the intersection of University and Amity Street. Is, is that what you're talking about, wayfinding? Are you talking about the little flag signs that uh, we're going to have up at the center of town? So th that's all part of it? Because this color does not, as I recall, we ended up with something like cream and brown. Am I right? Am I right on that? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess you could call it brown or I want to say rust. Uh, okay, well, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it, it should be some clarity around mm -hmm. what the colors are. If, you, if you're if you saying that it's the matching the wayfaring signs, that color is not at all what we had for the wayfaring. If, mm -hmm. if I'm correct in saying what is a wayfaring sign, is that the, those are the signs that are going to be down by the Emily Dickinson house and corner of Amity and University. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, as I recall, if the, the board can correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought the decision was sort of a brownish and cream. Uh, am I? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting, I'm going to pull up the most recent um, wayfinding. It's just taking a minute. We've had about three versions. <laughs> Yeah, that's also gone through a few different iterations. That's right. And I concur with Catherine and with Tom that there should be uh, consistency in the colors, yes. the fonts, and then how headers are used. And I think one thing that makes this a little bit different is that there is a, a body of text that you want people to read. And so the, the readability of that might introduce might introduce a new font because I don't know how the other fonts are going to work with multiple yeah, yeah, right, phrases right. stacked up here. But um, I also concur with Tom that a smaller sign would be good. <laughs> um, I, I I tend to agree that maybe that um, yeah, thirty I inch smaller sign. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just um, concerned think... about how many signs are going to be strung around the place. Uh, that's, sorry. Um, yeah, I do think that hanging the sign at, towards the top of the fence so that it's a little bit closer to eye level would be yeah. useful rather than trying to center it on the fence once you have it, if it is um, smaller. I found a couple of typos, this like missing Oxford commas that I can <laughs> point out here if anybody wants to get super picky. Um, and then you know, just looking at the the headings, you know, you've got town of Amherst dog park rules, and then right next to it, you have another one that says Amherst dog park etiquette. And I think you can just strike Amherst from that. It seems clear. So that would clean up the sign a little bit as well. Yeah, no, thanks. The um, um, If you have those comments, you know, the uh, missing commas or other things, just send it to Maureen or myself. I do think we we do want to have that corrected. So this is just a mock-up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll share actually what, um, for wayfinding, um, sorry, I'm just going to jump around. So we had, you know, we had Seth Gregory um, came up with a system and this is where like the downtown signs would go. It's not going to have this that's, finial. That's that's um, but the idea is to, right. Okay. The idea is to have you know these would be um, directional signs, and I'm just going to scroll okay. quickly. Um, right. you know, so this color, you know, the color where we'd want to match is what would be here on the on okay. the signs. Yeah. And then so what we came up with. Sorry, this is a long presentation. Close your eyes. So what we do have is a destination sign, um, you know, that we're proposing to have. You know, we're, we have you know a large freestanding sign like at Kendrick Park, you know, which is kind of a, a larger kind of welcome sign, and it would match, you know, say like the one on the the roundabout um, at the north end of downtown. And then there's this destination sign. Um, you know, so you know, what I was hoping to do is have you know take you know this whether or not we use this, uh, the banner here, but, you know, take the, this kind of um, size or proportion and even like this background logo and use that and replicate it with the dog park signs and same with the same, uh, you know, uh, font and everything, but it's just not easily done. Yeah. 
Okay. And so is that something, I mean, is that something you'd want to see in terms of consistency, right? So this kind of same, like, you know, you're saying like the typeface and color and design. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that, that that level of consistency is going to be really important. Right, yeah. And the, um, the use of the logo here, I think, is appropriate as a, as a screen in the background that might make reading text a little challenging. And so if you pulled it off into the, the maroon space, the white space um, mm -hmm. where available, I think that would be fine, but I would resist having the overlap. OK. OK. And it does, it sounds like you're talking about three signs, a welcome, the etiquette, and the, the rules. Right. Which I think is appropriate. And, you know, it's a great question. You asked what, it was asked, you know, what's, how, how are the kiosks being used? And right now, the one I brought up only had that COVID uh, sign. And the rest of the, you know, there's essentially eight display areas, eight display faces that were empty you know they have you know things on there that were taken down but um you know if you know this proportion could fit on one of those panels you know could you have the rules and regulations and etiquette on the kiosk and not the fence um you know is that too much clutter i, I mean i it'd be good I, i'd like to have a recommendation on that I, I do think you know we could probably um fill you know four of those faces on the kiosk but i mean to have you know eight panels of information seems like a lot um <laughs> you know well, i think originally the key I, you can remind you can correct me if if i'm wrong i thought that the kiosk was originally designed so that it would have all of that stuff the rules and the other sign uh would be on the kiosk because there was no discussion when we looked at this a couple of years ago about signs on the fence. Now, am I, can you recall? Anybody? Yeah, no, I think you might be right. I think, I think the dog park task force felt that maybe people wouldn't, you know, they would enter the site and they wouldn't necessarily look at the kiosk for rules and regulations. Yeah. So that's yeah. why they're hoping it would, you know, be on either side of the main entry gate. Yeah. So yeah. it's just, you know, it's like a fail safe. Mm -hmm. my, my sense is that if they're at scale and they look like the signs that you just showed, Mm -hmm. and they're mounted properly on that fence like i have no problem with them being there oh. i actually really truly feel that there's that the kiosk is going to be redundant um you know i think sure. i i think that um it's a lot of surface area and and maybe like you'll get like a lost dog or like you know a dog walker person that's going to put yeah. that little note yeah. up like that that kind of stuff i can imagine happening at a dog park probably more than a golf park but i still don't imagine you know eight surfaces being used even if they're all cork board for public use yeah. so um it's I, totally I true and four of those surfaces are around the back yeah. which means that no one's going there. You'll lose no. your audience if that's where yeah. you expect people to be reading the rules. Exactly. It's... Yeah. So somebody's going to have to monitor that. We talked about that before. Who's going to take care of the kiosk? Who's going to be sure that the yeah. the notices are current? And how are you going to get it up there? Maybe it'd be maybe you should go without the kiosk, and then if you then after a few months, you say, boy, we really need a kiosk. You can, can put, plop that thing in there because it doesn't look like yeah. it's a high tech uh, structure. Yeah, I mean, there'll be a lot of babysitting ads on the back of the kiosk, you know, or. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, but, you know, yeah. He's no, joking. I'm just joking. No, I, I kind of agree, though. When I, um, when I went to Groff, I was walking around and it looked like people had put up personal posters that the town would take down. Uh -huh. um, so it is something that has to be monitored because there is a lot of surface area. Yeah. yeah. Nate, when is this uh, being discussed with the planning board next? Uh, you know, so they approved the site plan. You know, so they, um, you know, the the park, the layout changed a little bit from when it was approved two years ago, just uh, due to uh, the clay cap over the, you know, it's an old landfill it was um, closer to the surface and extended closer to the road than thought. So the planning board approved the project, the site plan, but they have a condition that the signs be reviewed by the design review board and that they have to be um, reviewed and approved by the planning board before installation. So, 
you know, they've approved the project, but they want the signs and kiosks to be, you know, have recommendations from the design review board and then come back again. So, you know, if, if the design review board, if you feel like you'd like to see it again, that's something I can work with staff on you know, getting a better mock-up, you know, actual size of signs. And then we can, um, you know, I think, uh, I think July 27th is the soft opening. So those signs out I had up there today, you know, those like 17 by 17 squares, they might be up there temporarily, just, you know, um, like zip tied to the fence. And then we'd work on getting some permanent signs. Okay, so what's the feeling of the design review board that uh, we would like to take another look at it? Uh, do we wanna mention the fact we're not convinced that the kiosk really contributes much to the dog park? I, you know, how, how specific do you think we can be or should be? Uh, it seems like the agreement is we like the signs, but we feel they should be smaller. Uh, is that one point that we're all in agreement in on? Hello, yeah. everybody agree? Yes, smaller agree. signs. I agree the signs should be smaller. I like Tom's suggestion of trying the 30 inch yeah. Okay. Line. And I don't, this is an appropriate metaphor here, but this is kind of the um the tail that's wagging the dog in the sense that it's reminding us that having a consistent um package of design guidelines for signage um, yes. would be a great idea. And I, I don't um I'd like to you know review this with with that in mind as well. And we're so close, you know, with with the really comprehensive wayfinding package and those new welcome signs. Um, but, you know, for the town to be able to use it yes. um, or to budget in consultants um, for moments like this, I think would be appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that could be a recommendation too. I think, you know, like Maureen and I talked about, like, do we, you know, even if I, you know, was to get, even if the town was, you know, was able to have a license for illustrator, Am I the one that is going to go in and every time we need a sign, you know, change it, or do we have, you know, some reserve to hire, say, Seth again, or, or you know, some other, some other one to take a, a file? Um, I do like the idea of having a sign package. We don't have, you know, it's funny we have the wayfinding signs, we have these directional signs, and maybe now this destination sign, but we've never, um, you know, kind of come up with what are the suite of signs we'd need, say, at conservation areas or recreation areas and have a template that incorporates this wayfinding style. So I think that's where, you know, you see what we, you know, what we're able to do in Microsoft Publisher or, yeah. or something. Um, yeah, great. <laughs> well, if it's not a conflict of interest, there's a branding agency that I know um, myself that could probably help you out um, with a tiny stipend. Um, to make sure everything's consistent. So feel free to give me a holler. <laughs> Again, I don't know if we can we'll get me to have my own graphics approved by the planning board, but um, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I'll vote yes. So is it safe to say that we want to sort of continue this until yeah. um, updated sign plans and layouts are provided and, and to have better clarity of where they'll, they'll be located? Yeah. Yes, yes, let's do that. Okay. And then also maybe, I mean, the recommendation that perhaps the kiosk could be installed at a later date so we could see oh, how yeah. it functions. I'm not sure if it's been ordered yet, but. Oh, it's already been ordered. Well, is that, you know, it seems like that's maybe uh, something to explore. I think it's something to explore, really. I mean, the, the handful of thousands of dollars that you're spending on this kiosk could be spent on a design consultant. Yeah. 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 If that was. If that was a, an Boom. option, if it's already, I mean, if it's already been ordered, obviously, um, you know, it's just a matter of making sure that it's utilized well. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I know once we realize that you could, you know, put signs on the fence or if you don't, then maybe they go on the front of the kiosk. I guess it's kind of that decision. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't have a problem with smaller signs on the fence to be completely right. Yeah. I think One, Nate, one thing I would consider, and, and this would be something I would talk with the, um, the committee about, um, 
is that there are actually two layers of entry here. And mm -hmm. so it might make sense to get them to make them less visible if they wanted them larger to put them on that inside frame. So when you walk through the first gate before you actually go into the park on the left or right, there's a big panel there that's probably eight feet that you can put those two signs on. So you're still not in the park, but that way you don't see it. It's not, it's not something that's on the front of the, let's call it the facade of the park. Um, so that might be something to consider as well. If there, you know, I'd support a larger sign there, I think, than I would on the, on the front fence, okay. so. Oh, it's interesting. Yeah, maybe maybe that was their thought all along, and maybe it's just when that was described to me, it was lost in translation. I think that's a really nice idea. Um, Could you pull up a photo, um, the photos that you took today? I, I'm having trouble visualizing what, what Tom's talking about. Yeah, um, maybe the... Uh, let me just do... Um, I'll do the, I'll go to the PDF first. So I think what, um, this is, that, is this what I want? I guess so. Um, there's a. Use the grading plan, Nate. That's the cleanest one. Yeah, I was gonna just zoom in here. So when you, um, when you, um, the, the, where the signs are now that I, that I showed, um, you know, there's, there's this original, there's this main fence, which is actually now straight across. I guess that's the difference. It's now straight across. But then there is this vestibule that you enter and there's a gate to this side and a gate to this side. So Tom was saying the back of this is, you know, um, you see it when you walk right in and it's not necessarily at, at this, you know, at the, um, you know, right at the street level. So it's, you'd still see it um, you can see it before you enter the park physically, right. but it's behind that initial gate. Right. So I think yeah. if this is, I guess there's still a little, it goes back a little bit, but so yeah, behind this gate, but... this is the, you know, here's the, the, the fence going in, the, in, you know, into the background. And then there's a, a whole nother second fence here. Yeah. So you can see the bottom of the front fence is here. But then there's this other fence back here, right in the background. Yeah, I can have that. And then again, you'll still see it, but it's it's less like on the facade. I don't know. It's just a thought. But no, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I guess, guess that's you know, a great question to bring to the dog park committee. Yeah, yeah. The the one thing I, as a dog owner, I, I I would be curious to see what the committee would say is that that's where that's like the lobby, if you will. So you you go through the first gate with the dog, and then there and then that's the vestibule, and then the, they wait to go inside. And sometimes there could be multiple dogs in that zone, so it could be like uh, a little chaotic. What? Yeah, I'm just <laughs> saying, as, rules, as like but, someone yeah. that you're like um, interacting with like multiple dogs, all of a sudden you're like, I, I can't pay attention. Like it's yeah. hard to multitask. Yeah. Of having like loose dogs and stuff, uh, I but. Can see that. Yeah, so maybe good. that's just me. Yeah. No, I, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Or if you have, yeah. Yeah, I, I can see that. Actually, someone on the plane board asked, because, you know, one's a 30-pound small dog and bigger. And they said, well, what happens if you have two dogs that are, you know, they are in each different, you know, weight category? Yeah. I said, well, geez, they're supposed to be under voice control, so you should be able to control one from the other side. But no, no. Um, I'm assuming you can make it work in one side or the other. Um, but it was an interesting question about what do you have if you have multiple dogs? Okay, so where are we? Um, we're going to, you're going to sort of play around a little bit with that, uh, Nate, and then you're going to come back to us. Is that, is that what? Is yeah, that yeah, I think okay. I'd like to, um, Dave Zomax on vacation um, for a week. I'd like to, you know, meet with him and then with the dog park task okay. force and, and, and talk about um, you know, can we have, you know, like you said, uh, Erica, that there's different headers for every sign, right? I mean, every yeah. sign I showed you has a different kind of layout. Um, and so can we just get some consistency to, you know, whether it's the same font or the same, you know, 
I thought, you know, color, font, other things from the wayfinding and just have it be pretty clear. Um, you know, because for this welcoming, well, the welcome sign had gray, had a, you know, the, I don't know, there was some, you know, some of the font was a gray color and that's not, you know, in any of the other signs that we're using. So all of a sudden it's like, oh, we're introducing a new color and a new typeface. And it's like, oh, well, I'm not sure why that is. But yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, I'd like to be able to figure out how we can come up with some mock signs, you know, a little more. Okay, and then I'll type up the notes from this okay. meeting. And so, you know, um, it, uh, some of the notes include, you know, think oh. about being consistent with the wayfinding signs in, in relation to the font, the color, the design and the mm -hmm. layout. Um, think about readability of from, from, you know, viewing for the, I guess, for the pedestrian um, and think about the, the, the proximity from the sign where people are standing. To read it and then um, consider smaller signs um, than what's proposed. Um, review any typos and extra or uh, extra commas, etc. cetera. Yeah. Um, think about the headings. Um, think about removing it. There might be an extra Amherst on some of those signs. Just think about um, those sorts of things. And then think about whether a kiosk is needed uh, here or. Um, maybe look around at other dog, dog parks to see if they have kiosks and if they're used or not. Um, and then to come back um, with updated sign designs and layouts and showing the locations. Okay. That was it. Good. That's it. Cool. All right. Okay, Nate. <laughs> Thanks for coming and uh, we look forward to getting together again. Once. Yeah, I'm, I hope we can get it a little closer every time. So we're not. <laughs> okay. um, <laughs> okay. we, I, yeah, I'd like to have this, you know, at least the sign design done, you know, this summer and maybe they can get installed this fall. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. You know, this season. So yeah. And maybe you have maybe you can find it if if the kiosk has already been ordered, maybe you can find another park to stick it in. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do think there's some, been some good questions and comments. So I mean, I, I think you know, yeah. going back yeah. to them and just asking like, you know, is it, is the kiosk redundant? Could we put some signs on the kiosk? You know, how important is it to, that they're, you know, locations of where they are? And so, yeah, sure. I think it well, could be a good discussion could, about yeah. all that. I mean, to beat it to death, but okay. All right. Thanks. And Nate. that's it on the agenda. Um, yeah. Let's see if there's any members of the public. There are well, not. Thanks everyone. Okay. Thanks. Thank Bye Nate. You. Okay. And are there any minutes? Uh, no, unfortunately, right, okay. no. Okay. Uh, I am. So what I am doing, I am typing up these memos, and I send them off. And yeah. I, I don't. Um, frankly, I don't. I, I have very limited time that I can sure. devote I think to we're this. Fine. But, um, but I have these notes, and from okay. this, and for the other applications, yeah. and okay. uh, um, and uh, I am forwarding them along okay. to um, actually through OpenGov, so they're documented there. Um, which is a new permitting software. The one thing I forgot to add to this agenda is um, is is uh, how do they say it? Uh, reorgan uh, is electing officials for the board, so like a chair oh. and vice yeah. chair. So Should at the next that? meeting, we'll add that to the agenda. Okay. All right. um, we're we supposed to do it. that every fiscal year. Okay. I think I forgot it last year as well. So sorry, <laughs> uh, but we'll so. we'll think of it this coming year. Okay. And then Very just a good. couple other notes um, about um, hopefully you've checked out the parklets located in downtown. There's one in front of Fresh Side Restaurant and one in front of Amherst Coffee. And um, the town manager um, it approved those locations and the design. Um, um, as a temporary basis. Um, and so they're going to um, perhaps be removed um, at the end of the season. And so since it's temporary, um, they uh, the town manager didn't feel like it needed to go through the design review board. But if it does become a permanent thing um, or other restaurants hopefully want to do it as well, um, you know, we can talk about that with the town manager to see if, if a DRB review is, is needed. But um, hopefully you like them. I, I certainly do. I do. So, They're great. Yeah. Cool. And and then there are um, 
I guess on Spring Street, the that that is a mixed use building um, that's being built right now. Supposedly a charcuterie charcuterie is being proposed there on the first floor. Oh. And so um, at some point when Archipelago is ready to submit um, any signage or or what have you associated with that um, eatery, um, they'll be presenting uh, something with the DRB and um and that's the only thing that i know of right now but i'm sure things will as they always do will trickle in mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. all right okay i right, do i hear a motion that we adjourn the meeting mm -hmm. okay second eric i second it too okay <laughs> our meeting is adjourned thanks everybody thank, thank you, you. Yeah. and so that